Okay, so um, how can we help our clients, our friends, our colleagues um, purchase puppies or even adopt puppies that um, are going to be healthy dogs? So the first thing is to have a basic knowledge of a lot of the inherited diseases, especially in the uh, very popular breed. Almost every single breed of dog, um, as well as the mixes, have inherited or breed-related problems. Some of the problems are ocular, like cataracts, PRA. Others can be orthopedic, cardiac, or dermatologic. So um, knowledge, especially for me, of the ocular diseases um, inherited in the breeds um, helps people make a decision as to um, where and what to purchase. So um, there is no guarantee, no matter how many tests, genetic and examination, a puppy or a breeding dog has that will absolutely guarantee that that dog will never develop a problem that's considered to be breed related. And of course, as you've heard over and over, basically the OFA stands for health tested parents in order to get healthier puppies. So this is a picture of the companion animal eye registry examination. Um, it used to be known as SURF, or the Canine Eye Registry Foundation, and approximately five years ago, um, it was all taken over by OFA, and um, OFA is so much better. Um, we can actually get statistics that we were never able to get from SURF. So the left-hand side is filled out by the owner, and uh, we always request that um, we have a permanent ID that can be checked by the examiner, and only board-certified ophthalmologists can do these exams. So the different disease entities are basically divided um, into the sections of the eye, and then once a decision is made as to whether there are any eye problems at all that are, um, we can pick up on a specific animal, it's then determined whether it's considered breed related or something that was acquired by the dog from injury or infection. Um, and then another determination is made as to whether it is basically a no for breeding recommendation or breeder option. Things that are known to cause vision deficits are always a no. And there are several disease processes like extra eyelashes or lid abnormalities like entropion or ectropion that are a breeder option. So um, one, the, um, some of the other um, issues that are definitely a no for breeding would be glaucoma, keratoconjunctivitis sicca, and um, panis. So um, as discussed earlier, um, you can go to, to the breed um, part of the OFA and you can determine per breed, for each breed, what types of eye diseases are possible and what kind of clearances are necessary. And uh, the um, ACVO for many years has had something that has always been referred to as the blue book because the first time it was published, it was blue. Um, and now it is always updated um, on the OFA website. So you can check out each um, breed, what kind of diseases are most prevalent in that breed of dog, the eye diseases, and what the incidence of these diseases are. So when we have an eye exam, we are looking basically at the phenotype of the dog. And now it's becoming more and more possible to um, take the phenotype of the dog from the exam and then compare it to the, phenotype, for, to the genotype. 
Um, so we have the genetic markers, some are links, um, linkages, some are just the actual genetic abnormality. Um, and we know what they are for many breeds, especially the retinal diseases, and um, we can test for those. Um, the designer breeds, such as golden doodles, labradoodles, even cockapoos, which were a much earlier combination, also have inherited diseases. So we're, we're in the process, or I should say investigators are in the process of identifying a lot of the genes for, um, for inherited cataracts. Um, so, but we have found that a lot of the mixed breed dogs also get inherited cataracts. So if we look at this little chart, on the left-hand side are the purebred um, dogs, golden retrievers, labradors, poodles, cocker spaniels, and the retinal diseases that each of them get. So then if you have um, a golden retriever that is crossed with a poodle or a golden doodle, you can see that even the golden doodles still get four, three different types of progressive retinal atrophy. If you take a Labrador, a Labrador cross with a poodle, again, you can get retinal degeneration or retinal dystrophy, um, and there are several forms of retinal dystrophy. When you have poodles cross with a Cocker Spaniel, again, they both get PRCD type of PRA, and therefore the mixed breeds also get it. So progressive retinal atrophy is usually seen as a night blindness problem, and that's because there are two types of photoreceptor cells, the rods and the cones. The rods are responsible for night vision and the cones for basically day vision and color. A dog's retina is about 95% rods, which is why dogs normally see much better than we do in the dark, and why they have relatively little in the way of color vision. They mostly see blue. As, progressive at, um, as the progressive retinal atrophy continues, it leads usually to con, um, complete blindness, although a lot of dogs will maintain some vision during the day. So fundoscopically, it looks like um, disc pallor, optic nerve pallor, hyperreflectivity, and vessel attenuation. So on the left-hand side, this is a normal retina, nice healthy optic nerve, nice vessels. Um, this is the tapetal area of the retina, which is um, a layer of very highly reflective proteins underneath the retina, and the area on the lower aspect of the retina is the non tapetum On the right is a dog with very advanced progressive retinal atrophy. So we have a very atrophied pale optic nerve. You can hardly see any of the vessels, and if this picture had been taken with the same intensity flash as the left, all you'd see would be a bright blast of light. So this is all the hyperreflectivity that you would see in a retina. So this is what we see fundoscopically. Um, and then we put it together with the genetic test to see whether or not um, the problem that we're seeing is inherited or not. I recently examined a flat-coated retriever that had changes in the left eye, very similar to what you're seeing on the right-hand side, but the right eye looked like the left-hand side. And so I wasn't sure whether this was um, an inherited retinal degeneration or whether this was something that had been acquired because very severe chorioretinitis can cause severe retinal thinning and retinal degeneration that would show up just like PRA. So um, the at least Optogen, which is one of the companies that does do the genetic testing, um, one of the first and very reliable, I should say, also, um, 
they will test dogs that have been found suspicious for inherited diseases free of charge. So blood sample was sent um, into Optogen for this dog, and at least for the type of progressive retinal atrophy that um, flat coats get, he was negative. So I'm still not 100% sure that I would ever recommend that the dog be used for breeding, but the dog did test negative for PRA. Um, so, and it was very strange as well that the changes were only in one eye. So we try to put it all together with what we're seeing, with what the test shows. So retinal dysplasia is basically just the retina kind of folding over on itself during development. And there are a couple of different forms of retinal dysplasia. Um, so the very mildest form is retinal folds. A more severe form is what's called geographic dysplasia, and the most severe form is the retina is so abnormally developed that it totally detaches. And a lot of breeds of dogs that get retinal dysplasia are examined when they're between six and eight weeks of age for these abnormalities. Um, they're done very early because sometimes retinal folds will disappear as the dog gets older. So on the left is a typical retina with retinal folds and they look kind of like little worms. Um, in, the, in the tapetal area, they're darker in color and in the non-tapetum, they're usually white. Um, and um, in these areas, um, it's just that the retina is curled up on itself. Um, and it really doesn't cause any vision problems. In um, geographic dysplasia, which is very most common in either Labrador retrievers or Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, it takes on a circular area. And uh, the very first time I saw this, um, I was doing an eye um, clinic for Cavaliers, and the very first Cavalier that I saw, I thought that this was just some sort of chorioretinal change, maybe from a larva that was moving around in the retina and left these tracks. Um, but then, over the period of the day, after I examined 50 Cavaliers and 10 had this abnormality, I had to backtrack and notify the owners of the dogs that I was pretty suspicious that the dogs had a form of retinal dysplasia, and then research ensued. There is no um, test for Cavalier retinal dysplasia. So why do we want to know what is happening with retinal dysplasia? Well, Labrador retrievers and Samoyeds have two forms of retinal dysplasia. One is where they get retinal folds, um, sometimes just folds, sometimes geographic. Um, but they can also have a form of retinal dysplasia that is associated with oculoskeletal um, uh, malformations, which basically is just um, a dwarfing. So um, initially, before the genetic test became available, if we saw any Labrador or any Samoyed with retinal folds, because we didn't know what kind of dysplasia the dog had, it was an automatic no for breeding. However, now there is a genetic test for retinal dysplasia OSD. So if we examine during the OFA exam, um, if we find a dog with retinal folds, we can now recommend, especially if it's a beautiful dog that's a champion and they want to breed it, um, we usually recommend that the people have the test done, the genetic test. And if that dog with retinal folds is found to be free of the genetic form of, of retinal um, dysplasia OSD, that dog is now a breeder option. They, it can be used for breeding. So it makes a very big difference for the, 
for the breeders and the breeding populations of these breeds. So basically in summary, if a client contacts you and asks you to help them find a puppy that's going to be healthy, um, you want to ask them to try to find a breeder that does all the recommended clearances for their breed. And the puppy buyers should insist on seeing these clearances. And if the person that is selling the puppy says, oh, I have them, but I don't know where they are, or I sent the paperwork in and I don't have the certifications yet, those puppy buyers, no matter how cute the puppy is, need to walk away. They have a right to see all the clearances. So um, that's how you can help people to try to buy the puppy that is going to be the healthiest puppy they can have. Again, there's no guarantee because I've seen dogs that have clearances, the breeder, the mother and father are both clear for generations back and a puppy is produced that has either a cataract or um, develops retinal dysplasia because some of these um, diseases, as mentioned, a lot of them are um, recessive and eventually, when people do line breedings, they're going to show up. They're going to rear their ugly heads. So um, there's no guarantee, but there are things people can do to try to get the healthiest puppy they possibly can. And that's it. Thank you, Nancy.